Mazel morons, welcome back to a jam-packed butter your face and, and put it in the oven and bake it and eat it with a delicious friend uh, podcast. I, that was the worst introduction <laughs> ever. We're keeping it. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> it. We, Mazel morons. Wow. By the way, I would eat your face covered in butter put in the oven. Yeah, right? To, you par-bake it so that you like bake it halfway and then you bake it at home so it's extra crisp. Yeah, and like pull apart. Like, you know how you go to Masters and you have one of those like five cylinders, you pull each clump out of that like big circle? Oh, oh. man. I'd rather just bread over the human head, to be honest. Ooh, 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 ooh. Um, what's your perfect bread basket? Oh, my. Wow. Great Hon question, Josh. Honestly, Josh... I think it's that Carbone bread basket. I think mm. it's that Carbone. Say love, more. I love when it's not just, first of all, your breads need to be baked with meats or cheeses or they need to be rolled. It's one of those. But then if you can get a nice piece of garlic bread, so you have something open, a nice garlic spread, or that tomato spread that Carbone does, they take this like nice, is it a focaccia? I don't know what it is. Nice, soft, fluffy topped with their gorgeous tomato sauce that is my perfect bread basket get the pretzel rods out of here i hate those you know the i don't want any crackers wow no crackers mine is nice hearty mixed with some meats i like a rustic bread too you know when you get like that thick like a almost a, it's it's more Crusty. than seven grain it's probably like a 14 grain those thick breads by the way, who, who said that grains need to stop at seven? Great question. And are there only seven? Are there only seven grains or can we come out with a nine grain bread? Have we hit the, the glass ceiling on grain? On grains. Just, yeah. just wondering. What's your uh, go-to bread basket? You and I are different. Okay. Um, I'm going, first of all, warm pretzel bread wins the day every day. You give me some hardcore foot. I want some like. Rock, I want some crack rock salt mm. on that, on the top of that thing. I want it warm. I want a nice, as important as the bread basket is, the accompanying butter is just as important. Yes. I want that room temperature. I want it spreadable, not runny. Yes. And, and you know what? Use a stamp and put in your restaurant's insignia in the butter. Yes. Let me believe you put a little extra touch into it. Or... Or if you find out the diner's name, have do monogram butter. Yes. <laughs> at, at, at Chateau Good Guys, we do monogram butter. We do. We do for a small upcharge. Nothing crazy. You'll see it the bill. What a fucking game changer. Can you imagine proposing to your wife in butter? Butter. In. You know? In. Will you, will you, forever. Yeah. In butter. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <sighs> Great. Patent pending. Um, so the warm pretzel bun... Then I want a nice rustic baguette, like old school. Delicious. Crusty, nice French. Then I I feel, look, then in a separate domicile, because it's going to get wet in there, we're going old school garlic knots, okay? Mm. Mm. Freshly whipped in a bowl, in a big steel bowl with garlic and the parsley and the beautiful oil and butter and gorgeous. And then, and I know this is differing from you slightly, I like having a couple sesame breadstick. We need mm. that sesame. You Because you just want, like, because you know they're going to be left over because everyone crushed the pretzel bread first. You know it's going to be left over, and there's going to be a gap between your apps and your entree. And you're going to go, you know, I could not eat something, but I'm a fat pig. And if I don't put something in my mouth, I'm just going to feel empty. So you hit the you hit the breadstick and and it gets you to your entree. I understand. So you simply like the sesame because that's what I was talking about. The breadstick. You simply like that sesame breadstick because you know nobody's going to touch it, and you're worried that your blood sugar is going to go low in right. between the appetizer and the entree, and you need a little quick hit, a little quick hit of the bread to get you through. I understand. In between my third and fourth diet coke, I like a little sesame breadstick just to you know keep things moving. We forgot about one, I, probably my favorite bread. It doesn't belong in a basket, though. How mm. do you feel about a popover? A warm popover, butter on the side. Do you like that or you don't like that? I love it, but I think it's an event. It is. And it's it is. its own 
it and it it demands respect and it deserves it. Yes. 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 God. First 10 minutes of this podcast strictly talking about bread. I absolutely love it. What's better than bread? Nothing. 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 Nothing's better than bread. Absolutely nothing. And for good bread, bread, butter, salt. Done. In ranking order, bread, pasta, pizza. Bread. bread. One. One. Oh, and then- rank in order. <laughs> uh, bread, pasta, pizza. Same. Because with the bread, you can make a pizza. That's fair. I mean, I, I almost would put pasta one because I just realized I like vessels uh, of sauce. I love a Caesar. I love a salad because it's it's just it's dressing delivery. Correct. And, and same thing title. And I also like pasta because I just like I want to eat that the cheese or the 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 pen, the vodka sauce. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I do. That's why it's interesting. Is the chicken finger overrated? Because a chick, I love a chicken finger more than anyone. But a chicken finger is simply a vessel to a delicious sauce. A plain chicken finger, mm. no bueno. A chicken finger, though, that gives me the ability to get that gorgeous, full-fat Ken's honey mustard, or maybe mm. a beautiful Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce, or a little Hidden Valley Ranch Dunkaroo. That's what the chicken finger is for. But the chicken finger by itself dare I say, might be overrated. Because if you can't eat it plain, how high can you possibly rate it? But I will say the kissing cousin of the chicken tender, the chicken cutlet, done with a very simple little lemon squeeze and perhaps an arugula salad on top. Are you kidding me? Where are we? Tel Aviv? Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. A thin, a thin schnitzel chicken cutlet. Nothing better. Beyond. Nothing better. Beyond. Now, Beyond. you are our resident food expert. How are you getting that thin, thin chicken goodness? Are we, we're pounding it. We're pounding it. We're pounding it. We're going to the butcher and we're first asking them to slice it thin. Yes. That's first and foremost. If you're buying it straight off the packs in the grocery store, you need to get a mallet. And you're mm. pounding it and pounding it and pounding it and pounding it until it's really, really, really thin. Then we're going to twice bread this bad boy. We're going egg wash, flour mixture. Egg wash, flour mixture. Neutral oil up to 450 in golden brown out. Gorgeous. We hear you, King. We respect you, King. If I may make one suggestion and or question. (laughs) Can you do the egg wash flour, egg wash panko? Yes. Neutral oil. I love it. I'm in. I love a panko. Panko's fantastic. Also another, a cornflake. Oh, Mm. my God. Please, Marshall, you should eat screaming behind the, the console. <laughs> Cor- and I'm a vegan. Cornflake chicken, especially with a nice, like, very sweet sauce. Oh, huh. a, a cornflake oh temp- tempeh for Marshall. Uh, I'm having heat flashes. Uh, Gord, ugh. I'm soaking wet. <laughs> Delish. Delish. Well, we, we just got some drag out. You know, no, uh, no compromising, no apology speak pipes this week. And I think we would be remiss not spending a good amount of time on them. Should we Let's jump do- in? Let's rip. This episode of the Good Guys podcast is brought to you by Nutrafol. Did you know that hair thinning will happen to approximately one in two women? If you're among them, no, you're not alone. Thinning is normal and it's not openly talked about. And going through it can feel lonely and frustrating. Join the over 1 million people that are doing something about it with Nutrafol. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement with over 1 million people, 1 million people seeing thicker, stronger, faster growing hair with less shedding. Everyone's root causes of hair thinning are different. So a one size fits all approach to hair growth just doesn't cut it. Nutrafol has multiple formulas that are tailored to give your hair what it needs to grow throughout different stages, such as postpartum and menopause, as well as for different lifestyles, such as plant-based diets. Take their hair and wellness quiz on Nutrafol.com for a personalized hair health plan based on your specific root causes. Again, there isn't a one-size-fits-all formula here. Get it personalized with Nutrafol. With Nutrafol, building a hair growth routine is simple. Purchase online, no prescription required. Free shipping and automated deliveries ensure you'll never miss a day. See results in three to six months. 
So take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter promo code GOODGUYS. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and hairstylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code GOODGUYS. That's Nutrafol.com, promo code GOODGUYS. All right, let's do the first one from Anonymous. <coughs> Listen, morons, I need your help, and I'm going to cut to the chase. I'm 28. My ex is 31. We dated for five years, so you can do the math. A big reason that we broke up, the main reason that, well, he cheated on me multiple times and lied about it and is just a narcissistic, lying, cheating asshole. But listen, he's hot and he's got a charming (laughs) personality like most narcissists do. And I was deeply in love with this guy and it took me a long time to rip the bandaid off. (sighs) Anyway, while we were figuring shit out, We hooked up a handful of times, all while he was pursuing this other girl. Total rebound, but it drives me crazy because now they live together and now they live this happy little life and he's taking her to Cabo, which it was like our special thing. And it just drives me crazy that, listen, I'm a nice girl. Yeah, I'm hung up on my ex, but I want to be in love. I want to be happy. I want to do all the things. And I'm freaking out a little bit because I'm single as a Pringle at 28. And he's just out there happy as can be in a new relationship that pretty much started before we were even all the way over. So I just want to send a grenade into his happy little life and send a DM into this girl's <laughs> Instagram and say, listen, he cheated on me. He cheated on you. He's cheated on every girl he's ever cared about because it's just not right. This guy's a schmuck and he's just living his happy little life with this happy little girl. And it just <clears throat> drives me crazy. So what do you think? Single is a Pringle title. I love, I love this woman. What was our lovely lady's name? Uh, Anonymous. Oh, okay, cool. We need her name because she's such a a queen. Love her. First and foremost, I'm so sorry that you were cheated on. Like that fucking sucks. It's Mm. really, really, really not nice. I'm so a fan of you grenading this girl if you want to. She (laughs) should know. She should totally know. But what I'd also say is that I would urge you to try your absolute hardest to forget that this man ever existed. Like, it, it, it is really fucking hard, and if you want to go, like, you're totally entitled to sabotage his future relationships and do whatever you're going to do because he's a schmuck. But I really think that we're looking out for your best interest, right, Josh? Mm. Like, we, we want what's best for Anonymous, and what's best for Anonymous is to move on. And it sounds like you're a great girl, and you'll find a great guy that treats you right and doesn't cheat on you. And, uh, yeah, that's... That's my opinion. I agree. Let's talk first about narcissists because I major in, in women with personality disorders. I know this is a man. <laughs> <laughs> Until I met my wonderful wife who's perfect in every way, every woman before her, nuts, 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 nuts. What are you nuts? <laughs> the women Josh dated before her. Um, I've heard it once said about narcissists. Narcissists know which buttons to push because they installed them. Okay. Wow. Wow, that's scary. Yeah. Narcissists have this incredible power of literally, when they are shining their light on you, you feel like there is no one better than you on this earth. And they will inflate you in a way that's like drugs. But as soon as they turn their light off, it is as cold as the desert. It (laughs) is freezing. And that's not healthy. And it's wonderful. And in your teens, in your 20s, when you're with a narcissist, that is just par for the course. It is it is totally normal to fall for these people, but inevitably. And true personality disorders, right? The hierarchy of personality disorders, borderline personality, narcissistic personality, uh, histrionic. These are very cunning and baffling things because they run rampant, but they're not as... Um, uh, disabling or, 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 or they're not as severe as the severe mental disorders, schizophrenia, bipolar, things like this, right? Sure. So pe- the problem is people are able to live with them, which means they're rarely treated mm. and they're hard to treat. Mm-hmm. So a narcissist, there's nothing like one. We should all have one in our life. But if you marry them, 
it's 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 a bad sign. And here, in case you are wondering if you're dating a narcissist, my wife's listening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's just Josh, 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 Josh at home. <laughs> um, here are nine signs from Duke Health of a narcissist. Sense of self-importance. Preoccupation with power, beauty, or success. Entitled. Can only be around people who are important or special. Interpersonally exploitive of their own, uh, for their own gain. Arrogant. Lack empathy. That's a big one. Must be admired. Envious of others or believe that others are envious of them. Sounds like a terrible person. I'd say run for the hills, dear. You had your time. It hurts. Your ego is hurt. Oh, this is another good one. And then I'll stop talking. Um, <laughs> when you are f***ed with by someone with a personality disorder, it's not personal. And I promise you, whoever they're with next is getting the exact same treatment. They are not so much better than you than suddenly they've cured this person you're in love with. They are going to get the same treatment. And if it does work out, it's because that person is as broken as they are and they're both holding on for dear life. Wow. Sheesh. I feel like I was just at the therapist's office. That was really, really excellent advice. Excellent. And I've, uh, I've had some ha psychos out my outside my window screaming my name, Ben. <laughs> Ex excellent advice. An anonymous take note. And... Uh, yeah, you know, you did one more thing. She did mention the fact that he was devilishly handsome, which mm. is why she kept going back to him. I and get all it. I gotta, and all I got to say, though, is, you know, sometimes those guys are cheaters. Like, sometimes the guy that is, like, and it's not all handsome men, because, look, you have me and Josh, two male models. We're not cheaters. But I'm just saying, you have these types of men that are really good looking, really obsessed with themselves. And he can mm. sort of spot a cheater from a mile away. So if that's the type of person that you like, you should also probably try to see if you could like other types of people too, because otherwise it's going to happen again. So, so true. And narcissists sometimes if, get, if they're pushed to the brink, become murderers. So really, maybe you saved yourself. Yeah, they can. Frightening. This episode of the Good Guys Podcast is brought to you by Element. Healthy hydration isn't just about drinking water. It's about water and electrolytes. We've been told since the 1940s that we're supposed to drink eight glasses of water per day, thirsty or not. But that's just not true. It's not a great idea. Drinking beyond thirst, it's, it's, it's not right. Thirst is the way that our bodies regulate blood volume and fluid balance. When you need more fluids, you get thirsty. And when you drink plain water beyond thirst, it dilutes blood electrolyte levels and leads to nasty consequences. Enter Element, created by former research biochemist Rob Wolf and Keto Gains founder Louis Valasignor. Element has enough sodium, potassium, and magnesium to get you feeling and performing your best. The evidence suggests that we should shoot for 4,000 to 6,000 milligrams of sodium. 3,500 to 5,000 milligrams of potassium and 400 to 600 milligrams of magnesium per day from diet and supplements. If that sounds like a lot of sodium, consider that athletes can lose up to seven grams of sodium per day through sweat. Most people fall short of electrolytes. Element has your electrolyte needs covered with 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. It contains enough electrolytes to move the needle towards each of your daily electrolyte goals. You're also guaranteed to find an element flavor you love. Try fan favorite citrus salt or raspberry salt. Get spicy with mango chili or mix chocolate salt into your morning coffee for a mean mocha. Element came up with a fantastic offer just for us. Just go to drinkelement.com slash good guys. That's drinklmnt.com slash good guys to get a free sample pack with any purchase. Okay, now next from Jessica, I have a story. Hi, Josh. Hi, Ben. Big moron here. Big toaster as well. Used to be another podcast. No more. The Ashray Sofer clan has taken over my life, so good on you. Um, I just wanted to reach out because I am in a little bit of a dilemma. Um, could use your guys' advice. I recently have started dating someone new, and uh, we've been friends for some time. I was single for about a year before this, kind of in a toxic relationship before that, so have been cautiously optimistic, and things are going great. Um, he's wonderful, finally broke down my walls, I'm open-minded about it, 
one caveat to that, he is my coworker, and I know this happens all the time, but we're on a very tight knit team, and only a couple other people on the team know my dear friends, and I am debating how and when to go public with it, tell our manager. Um, we don't like manage each other, which is good, but we do work very closely, like in parallel, and. I just wanted your advice on how to go about it, when the right time might be. I feel like there hasn't been a right time, but I've been so tempted to tell my team because we're all very close friends, too. And I hate lying. I hate being dishonest. And I just want to rip the Band-Aid off. So any and all suggestions are welcome. Thanks. Love you guys. Wow. This is a tough one. This is a tough one for me. First and foremost, good on you for ditching the other podcast. You don't need more. You don't need no. more. None. No. It's good. This is enough. It's totally enough. Yep. And if it's not enough, we'll add another episode. Just let us know. But it's enough. Mondays, no, we, Thursdays. No, we won't. No, we enough. won't. If We'll go to four or five days a week. It's fine. It's Mo never happening. <laughs> Mondays and Thursdays. It's enough. We're you can go back, re-listen, keep re-listening, and just keep re-listening. Millions <sighs> of dollars I'll need. No. We don't talk <laughs> about money. <laughs> we, we need nothing we do it out of the, we, we need nothing we do it out of the goodness of our hearts i want for nothing monetary i'm like a monk <laughs> um i can't imagine a world in which i'm best friend with my coworkers. to me that's the biggest what you nuts really because, yeah because there's a difference between being a co-worker friend right Coworker friend, you want to make allies in the office, right? You want to have somebody to have lunch with, for sure. But the second that relationship gets taken outside of the office, and all of a sudden you're best friends with these people, I don't know, to me, jobs are so, one day you're employed, the next day you're not. One day this person uh, wants a promotion, they step on your face, and all of a sudden you lost your friend. I don't know. I think office politics... Plus, a real friendship, to me, always gave me the heebie-jeebies. That's just me personally. But you have a whole big group of friends. It seems totally normal, then, that you would be dating a guy that is a part of this group because you're all close. And if you're all really that close, it sounds like a very nice place to work. They'd probably be very open to it. And I would just come out with it immediately. I would come out with it immediately. That said, I'm doubling back for a second. It does potentially hurt both of your tracks for promotions. Right? Because mm. one of you, they would never make one the manager of the other, right? But maybe one of you is on track to become the other's manager. And maybe you both can't become manager at the same time. So does it hurt your career? Who knows? There's an old phrase, you're as sick as your secrets. And yes, we apply <laughs> that to down and dirty blackout drunks like myself. I digress. But the reality is, is like you just you can't keep this shit a secret, especially when you're good and in love. Like that's just too hard. It's no fun. And I agree with Ben that the longer you wait, and some people knowing and not knowing, you people will harbor resentment if they feel like other people knew, because you feel foolish. I've had that before, where friends have been hooking up and some people knew and I didn't, and I'm like, I don't care that you're hooking up. I just hate that like there was a charade going on and I was not a part of it. Um, yep. so yeah. And I obviously like, you know, as of recently, you know, the level of, of HR involved in office romances is a good thing and power dynamics and whatnot. Like it was important that it be addressed and corrected. But I also think when you spend 10 hours a day at work, there's just a good chance if you're at that age where you start to like partner up with people that you could find someone you're attracted to. So yep. I think, uh, I don't know. Do you, do you go to HR and kind of say like, Hey, we, we fell for each other. What are best steps? Like do you kind of rat yourself out. I don't that's, know. That's probably a good idea. The HR approach. I like it. Yeah. Asking yeah. as long as your HR person isn't a sneaky little rat. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> like isn't that never, part of the job title? Like, like you never know. <laughs> like these HR people sometimes are like holier than God, like so amazing, so sweet. And some of them are just rat, rat, rat. Yeah, and you know that those people, they're in the bondage. If you're in HR, you're going home doing some kinks. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, next speak pipe from, uh, let's see, who is it from? Next one from Dennis. They have like a lower back tattoo of their employer. <laughs> hey, Josh. 
I'm Dennis, living in Virginia. Huge moron here. And uh, so the Oscars are this weekend, or they'll have just passed by the time you saw this or heard this. Oppenheimer, you know, Josh Movies probably just won the Best Picture Oscar, most likely. And mm-hmm. you know, our DJ probably just got Best Supporting Actor. But I just wanted to say, why did Josh not get nominated for that? All right. You know, I really, I really felt when he said, when he, when he pressed that button, he said, understood. That hit me, man. When he went and said, I'm not a soldier, I'm a scientist. That shit, it hit. I just want to know why. All right, you know, Rami Malik, he's only in it for five seconds. Whoa. He's an Oscar winner. Different movie. So, you know, Josh, Josh deserved to be nominated. That's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, you know, he, he did more than Rami Malik did. Oh my so, God! All right, wow. Give what what is that? My inner yeah, monologue no, jogging or what? <laughs> live from I mean, my dark really thoughts. All right, Stop. thanks, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine Dennis recording that speak pipe with a beautiful Marlboro Red, standing outside his office, taking a deep puff. <sighs> yeah, yeah, he's Rami Malek is so much worse. <sighs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just glad that my mom has learned how to do AI voice distortion. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, love thank Dennis you so though. much. Yeah, Dennis, we love you. We love you. We, we love you, Dennis. Good looking out, Rami Malik, brilliant actor, so wonderful and deserving, incredible as Freddie Mercury and, and everything he does. But yeah, Dennis, love you, Oppenheimer, woohoo! Oscar uh, winner, Josh, look at him. This is from Shay. <laughs> Hi, Josh. Hi, Ben. My name is Shay. I'm a dedicated moron. So is my boyfriend. So we'll invite you to the wedding. Two morons living happily ever after. But anyway, today I have a what are you nuts? There have been recently two separate occasions where people who I know, not that I'm close with, but people that I know I'm friends with on social media. Okay, that's what's important. Their grandmas on two separate occasions have passed away. Now, both times, these two separate individuals posted photos of their deceased grandmothers on Facebook. One literally on the couch where they found her, (laughs) and the other was in the casket during a funeral. Um, I I just have to say, what are you freaking nuts? Keep your dead grandma off my Facebook timeline. (laughs) Show me some memes or something. Like, I don't know. Am I being dramatic? Am I being insensitive? Or are they just being disgusting? I, I People send us what are you nuts all the time, and they almost always suck. But that was one of the rare, incredible ones I, I had to share. it. So good. And by the way, so you are good. so right, lady. If I see sometimes people will post a picture of their dead dog, and, I, and that sends shivers down my spine. Mm. Show me a picture of the beautiful... A live dog that you miss, but to go posting your dead grandmother. You know how you know how upset your grandmother would be that you posted a picture of her dead. Oh grandmas want grandmas want to look to the nines. Big hair, some nice lip, maybe yes. a nice silk blouse, right? Some good, beautiful pearl earrings. She wants to look good. You're posting her dead. That's not nice. What are you nuts? You're so right, Ben, because if I dared posted a dead photo of my grandmother, God rest her soul, May Schwartzman, (laughs) like you want to talk about. I mean, if I didn't if I didn't show her done up with her Lancome mascara and Chanel number five, Chanel number five, her chignon bouffant French braid hair resting for her eternal rest on her satin pillowcase so it doesn't mess up her hair at night. I only wash my hair once a week. I get my hair done once a week, Joshy. (laughs) (laughs) I remember once, my grandmother literally had like the giant, beautiful, gigantic hair. And I remember once at like seven years old, she took me to the salon and I saw it wet for the first time (laughs) in my life. (laughs) And I thought, I was like, who stole my grandmother? It looked like... (laughs) I thought I was in Stranger Things and I was in the Upside Down. <laughs> uh, we gotta, we gotta bring back big hair. Imagine our wives had that big hair. 
<laughs> Jeez. <laughs> that updo, you put it in the... You think that those things were cancerous? Those, like, updoed, you're putting your head in the microwave? Well, like, with the Aquanet? Yeah. Well, those are just heat, right? Like yeah, uh, It's probably okay. It, they're like they're like little mini atmospheric blow dryers, right? That that kind of dries the hair. I don't know. I I do know that women or or I shouldn't say women, but when someone gets a gel manicure and they put their hands under these UV lights to dry the uh, nail polish, that it it can be cancerous, which is pretty crazy. Wow, wow. Because I I guess it's like a tanning bed for your hands. Yeah. You are very, very media trained to say that not only women get uh, gel in the manicures. Are you getting a gel manicure? Look, women and Tom Sandoval. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the gel, honestly, I feel like it would hurt. I hear that it hurts the nail beds. No good. It can, yeah. But if you're going to do it, gels are nice because no one wants to have chips. When you go in to get a manicure pedicure, which I'm sure you occasionally do, and they ask mm -hmm. you for clear polish, how quickly do you say no? Or do you say yes? I not only do I say no to the polish, I say no to shiny buff. Yeah, see, sometimes I want to get fancy with the buff. It's oh, been a while. It's you're been crazy. a while. You're it's crazy. been a while. But sometimes I like to look down at that thumb and get, wow, that is a shiny thumb. The buff, it's good. <laughs> I like the buff. By the way, is the same material on the buff what they use to play the violin? Um, the horse hair? Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's that same little puffy stuff that you. No, you know what I'm talking about? On a no? on a violin, the the bow of a violin, like on the yeah the that, bow the that's bow. horse it, that's it's horse hair. It is. Well, they, they probably use a synthetic material for some bows, but traditionally, oh. like on a Stradivarius, it's horse hair. Who knew? All right, so not the same as buffing my nails. <laughs> well, you know, different strokes. Um, okay, <laughs> <laughs> this next one's from Jesse G. Hi guys, big moron here, Jesse G in the building. Uh, Represent! So just wanted to touch on a topic that you talked about in your last podcast about letting one rip in celebrities' <laughs> cars. Uh, I used to work for a Toyota Lexus dealership as a detailer, <laughs> and it so happens that George Lucas was uh, purchasing a new Lexus, and it was my job to detail it for him. Well definitely took the opportunity to let one squeak out um, and I brag about it to this day so just want to let you know it does happen and it's a great feeling thank you first of all George Lucas worth four billion dollars <laughs> it's got a Lexus <laughs> I just love how proud he was I love that man God and by the way these speak pipes from the morons unbelievable so the moron good. game is through the roof. And all I have to say, 50-50 men, 50-50 women, the boys are back in town. Tin Lizzie, baby. They're here. They're here. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I can just imagine George Lucas getting into his Lexus and, and talking to his friend who's also getting in and going, so then I came up with Luke. I'm your, oh, gosh. <laughs> God. <laughs> Ooh, do you smell? Does it, it smells like um, like chowder that <laughs> and shit, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, there is nothing. I know we don't want to talk about poop. There is nothing worse than a post chowder <laughs> fart. That, no <laughs> that hot steamy goo. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> the the fuel behind it's really the bread bowl. Oh yeah, <laughs> woo. My, I'm sweating over here just thinking about it. Um, <laughs> before we get to our what are you nuts? Yes. I just want to share with all of the morons because you followed my very, very uh, sad journey and you absolutely loved Theo for an incredibly long time. I do want to let you guys know that we have gotten a new puppy. You probably saw it on social media, but I haven't spoken about it yet. His name is Romeo. He is basically an absolute clone of Theo. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we're going for that. Um, but we hope that Theo's like body, soul, mind entered this little man. He's super cute. And oh, it was just like such like an emotional time. And uh, I just wanted to share it because I don't know when else I'd share it. But we have a new puppy. You'll see him on social. You'll see me walking him, walking up to the horses, pulling off a couple hairs and making a violin. Mazal. Um, I know everyone's wondering which uh, rescue did you wind up going with? To get yeah, the, to get we Romeo. actually yeah we found him in a dumpster in Maryland. 
Um, <laughs> and I looked to the right and I heard just crying from the dumpster. So I, I jumped on top of my Camry, swan dove into the beautiful pile of trash and rescued a perfect eight week old <laughs> King Charles Cavalier. I it may up, have looked like it was from a breeder, but it wasn't. I rolled up my Lee dungarees. <laughs> And I said, I'm going to mess up my Air Monarchs, but babe, it's worth it. We're in. We're in. What are you um, nuts? Yes. And by the way, if you want to leave us a message, if you want basically asking for our advice tends to be the best, go to speakpipe.com slash good guys. Uh, my what are you nuts moment of the week is, and I'm sure I'm going to have more of them, it's... Um, parents and youth sports so my son is part of the la kings uh uh la kings kids program where he's learning how to play hockey it's a wonderful program Sweet. they outfit him and all this cool gear he doesn't know how to skate no one told me that he needed to know and uh it was a really embarrassing <laughs> moment for all of us on saturday but literally the program is created to be non-competitive it there's no games it's all drills and it's really to just introduce kids to the sport and get you know more adept at, at handling a stick and skating and all these things the level of insane annoying parent competitiveness screaming through the glass i was like what are you nuts this is like an after school program there's literally there's no competition they're skating around cones what are you nuts? It's nuts. Me, this is going to be bad for me. Holding nuts. my tongue, not good. Nuts, especially in that environment. Like I could see you. I know that you pretend that you won't be one of those, but I can see you. Max gets really good at hockey. Let's say he's really, really good, and you're watching. You're screaming. You're bashing on the glass. You're like you'll. I you won't be overly critical, but you'll get into it if he's really good. Yeah, I mean, I think I'll be supportive, but thankfully I come from a family of true athletes. Like the most annoying true. parents true, are true, ones true. Where, who played high school sports. It's like, babe, you weren't even good enough to go play D3 at St. John's, my my guy. Okay? Yeah. Like, yeah. I know you were the starting point guard at fucking East Cleveland Polytechnic or wherever yeah. you went. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, but like, no good. Give me a break. Get over yourself. Like real athletes, they're not wild like that, in my experience. Yes. Yes. Couldn't agree more. My what are you nuts yeah. is to the entire company, entire operation that is paperless post. Okay? Mm. I get invited to your cookout. I get invited to your housewarming. I get Quince invited to your quinceanera, bris. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. And I am reminded non-stop via text message that this event is occurring whether or not I have RSVP'd. I did not RSVP for this particular housewarming. And no joke, I got a text a day for a week about this, updating. And maybe it was the host. Maybe the host kept sending out these messages, updating the address, whatever it was. So maybe it's not people as post. Maybe it was the host. All I know, I was being flooded, absolutely flooded, what are you, nuts? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I don't want to respond to your paperless post. I don't want to come to your housewarming party. Your housewarming party doesn't need a paperless post. Text me. Text me. If you want to text me, say, hey, Ben, can you come to my housewarming party? No, I can't. I can't come. I'm disinterested. I'm not, I don't want to come. I, housewarming parties in general to me are what are you, nuts? But the paperless post of it all threw it over the edge. What are you, nuts? We love you. Thank you for listening. Rate, review, and subscribe. Leave a review. Give the podcast five stars. It helps. We love you. Um, Otherwise, what are you, nuts? You got to. You got to give us five stars. Otherwise, what are you, nuts? Spotify, Apple, Josh's YouTube, Josh's YouTube. Watch us, folks. The clips. The clips are coming. And folks, we'll catch you on the next episode of Good Guys, Mondays and Thursdays.